They're at the post, first wire. You're listening to the first wire, a Keeneland preview. And now here's your host, Trey Server. Hello and welcome to another episode of the first wire podcast. I'm your host, Trey Server. Joined by C.C. Broadus to discuss Saturday, October the 12th at Keelan Racecourse. Um, just as a recap for the last couple of days since we've not been with you, um, C.C. gave out the uh, Stone Cold Double today, um, the two and the six. And we parlayed that into the turf pick three and the late pick five. And thankfully to a bunch of our friends uh, from Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, we were able to uh, give them a, a little bit of a uh, a thrill. Didn't pay a whole lot based on what we bet, but um, a win is a win. Um, we also were able to uh, hit a couple of races, um, and so our our picks have been pretty good so far. So um, we're going to hope to uh, keep that going, like I said, for Saturday. Um, another tough race uh, card that Keelan's put together, um, but we're going to see what we can do. CC, thank you for joining me this evening. How are you? Pretty good. It's always good when you give out winners. Now the bad news was that 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 winner was that cold double we gave out. It only paid nine to two. So, but it's still that's still a winner. So, uh, we got money to fire with on uh, Saturday's card, which is uh, I think uh, challenging to say the least. Absolutely. Well, let's get started here. I know we just said we want to discuss a couple races tonight. Um, the first of which is race number two, which is a uh, maiden. For two-year-old Colts, uh, going a mile and a sixteenth on the turf. Um, this race looks pretty wide open. Um, number one for uh, Graham Motion with John Velasquez. Uh, we'll talk about first, uh, second time on the turf. Um, basically was prominent throughout. Just got beat by three quarters of the length. Um, if he's able to produce this race again, I think he'll be pretty tough. Um, there's another horse in here, and I and I I've, I've had trouble betting Irad and Chad Brown here lately. Doesn't seem like they've been firing uh, their best shots, but number eight, uh, governing party, um, looks to be another prominent factor as well, um, just based on the uh, connections themselves. Um, he's his last speed buyer figure was only a 65, but at uh, Kentucky Downs may have uh, needed a little race or two. Um, I know the number 10 horse is going to take a lot of money. A second time starter for, uh, Will, um, sorry, Bill Mott, um, with Junior Alvarado. If he does come into rise, it's going to be very tough. Um, he's going to have that outside stocking trip. Um, they paid 900000 for this horse. Um, so they're obviously expecting big things. Uh, other than that, if those three don't hit the board, uh, it's pretty wide open. How about yourself, CC? What did you think? For me, I'm landing on number 10 executive for Bill Mott. Uh, uh, nice effort in his career debut at Saratoga. He, he was at the back of the pack. They weren't going all that fast. Uh, really turned it on late in the stretch and was really galloping out well at the finish to get third. It was a pretty decent field, as I remember. But uh, this source uh, makes a second start for Mott. And I think the dam, low pressure zone, I think this horse – this mare is from the family of not this time. So pretty decent family. Now, this, this particular branch of the family hasn't produced a whole lot, but uh, you go further back and there's some there's some real winners in here. So, yeah, executive would be the one for me. And maybe if you're looking to maybe throw some horses underneath, uh, the rail horse uh, Paraclete for Grand Motion, John Velasquez. Horse had the lead at the top of the stretch at Laurel and was run down by Lordly. I thought that was a decent effort. Uh, probably, you know, if uh, motion thinks enough to ship him to Keeneland, it usually means they got a, they got a shot. I think it's a positive jockey switch to John Velasquez. Number three, geometry, the son of uh, twirling candy out of a good George Strawberry, uh, George Strawbridge mare vanishing. And Jonathan Thomas is a trainer. He, he legs up Frankie de Torrey. I think you can throw out that first start at uh, Kentucky Downs. You know, uh, horses can improve quite a bit between starts one and two. And, yeah, geometry, 
obviously deserves a, uh, a look here. And then the other horse I would consider underneath executive would be the nine sprint out pass. I believe that's a football term. Horse owned by August Dawn Farm, which is owned by Bill Parcells, who won a few Super Bowls in his time. Robbie Medina trains this horse, son of Constitution. Interesting that this horse keeps getting bet. In his first start at Dallas, July 22nd, he was sent off 5-2. to two, And I don't know what happened. The, the running line says taken out at start, but he he did not run an inch in that race. And he was last early by a mile before they even got into the first turn. And he didn't improve much after that. So that was a toss. Comes back to Kentucky Downs, and he, and he still goes off at 6-1 to one in a pretty decent field. And he ran okay there, ran fifth. So I, I feel like there's some talent there. And we don't get to see a lot of his workouts because he's at the Thoroughbred Center out on Paris Pike in Lexington. But uh, sprint out pass is one that uh, I would consider underneath. So I would play maybe like an exact, a 10 with one, three, nine, and then maybe reverse it for a smaller amount, one, three, nine with 10. And uh, hopefully we can get uh, executive home. Okay. I like it there. All right. Moving on, we're going to talk about race number three. Um, this race has a uh, four to five morning line favorite, two sharp um, for Phil Bauer and Rigney Racing coming out of the grade three prior S. Um, just got beat a neck to Brightwork, who uh, ran here a couple days ago, did not do very well, but um, still a great horse. Uh, this probably going to be the like you said, probably three to five, two to five on this on this horse. Most logical winner. Um, there are some other speed horses in here, um, so it might make that horse a little vulnerable potentially at the end. Uh, if that's the case, I think number six is Zadorsky um, for uh, Whit Beckman. Um, and Luis Saez could come uh, pick up the pieces a little bit late. Um, otherwise, I, I think it's almost like a four six six four kind of thing. How about yourself? Yeah, for me, it's too sharp. Uh, I, I don't see any way around her. I really don't want to take her on. She's uh, She was a talking horse way back in June and, and would have won her debut, but she blew the break and had a wide trip. So, And then, uh, yeah, I, honestly, they could have probably tackled the, uh, the, uh, the Raven Run next Saturday. I think it's next weekend. I think that's right. Uh, so, you know, I, I suppose they could still scratch, but, you know, maybe they want to take on this, uh, this, uh, non winners of one and just take the easy win. I, I can't see any way around it. I think, uh, I think this Philly's a good. So I'll, I'll just single her at three to five and we'll move on. Okay. Um, if you try to want to, or want to parlay that into maybe a, uh, the pick four or a pick three, not really going to discuss race number four. Um, but potential horses in there. I thought number five, yes, I'm a beast. Um, speed coming in from Gulfstream Park. If you throw out the uh, slop at uh, Churchill Downs, the horse had won uh, five in a row, six in a row. Um, so that horse could probably be pretty tough. And then number six, global sensation for Juan Cano. Uh, that horse is coming in off a four uh, win streak as well. And I know that's, that's a trainer that you like. Um, so that's something you might be able to, to like I said, uh, use uh, if you're going to single the four horse in that race. Um, number The race number five is a maiden amount of 16th on the turf. Um, this is a race we are going to jump into. Um, I thought it was pretty wide open. Um, no offense to Dallas Stewart, but I always try to beat uh, him. And he's a five to two morning line favorite um, with Luis Saez, um, a deserving favorite probably. Uh, just finished second by a neck at uh, Kentucky Downs. Um, but like I said, I'm going to try to beat him. The five is Brad Cox um, for Florent Giroux with Blue Chair Bay. Also uh, coming in from Kentucky Downs, going to be a second start. Um, number nine is a, a Brendan Walsh first-time starter uh, for Shadwell Stable with Tyler Gaffleone. Um, some steady works coming in with uh, Warfront. Uh, bloodline i think he's got a real shot and then number 12 i don't really like to play the 12 hole but obviously today that uh came back to bite me a little bit um so that horse uh, might have a chance um, out of a yoshida uh, bloodline and jose ortiz 
Uh, what about you, uh, CC? How did you see this one? Yeah, this is a, a race ripe for the pickings because I don't like the two favorites, the two morning line favorites, number four, Lucky Mischief for Dallas Stewart, number five, Blue Chair Bay. I don't like either one of them. But Lucky Mischief is 0 for 3. Now, she's getting closer with every start. She actually was just beating the neck last time, so obviously uh, she's going to take some beating in here. And number five, Blue Chair Bay is the second-time starter for, for Brad Cox, who was well beaten in his first start. The sire instilled regard. Uh, sired the winner of the the Bourbon Stakes on two year uh, on Sunday, the two year old race. Uh, Minaret Station won that one for uh, OXO Equine, who campaigned in Steeled Regard. But I, I'm not in love with either one of those two, to be honest. So, so let's take some prices in here. You know, number one, Johnny's Rendezvous for uh, Phil Bauer, Jamie Torres aboard. I, I think I've talked uh, relentlessly about how great a, a turf jockey. Jamie Torres, I think, is this horse uh, broke from the ten hole in his debut at Saratoga and was gunned to the lead, and I think he was a bit headstrong early, and it was asking a lot to to run two turns in your first start, but the horse did hold on fairly well, and he got a little bit tired in the last sixteenth of a mile. Well, that was a pretty good effort to build on. Then he comes back and just runs a stinker at Kentucky Downs. Fifth beating 11 links. The winner came back to run well on Sunday for uh, Carlo Vacareza. So I'm just going to draw a line through that race, and we'll use Johnny's rendezvous in there. Uh, another horse I'm interested in, number six, Maui Strong. Probably going to be a long shot for Dale Romans, the son of Kitten's Joy of a Giants Causeway mare. Uh, showed a little bit of speed. Don't think his horse is a sprinter. He, he looks like a... a Pretty large size animal, so I think I think two turns to stretch out would be uh, that'll work well for him. So I, I would think uh, think uh, at, at a price I want to use him. Victor Shamano, who won the French Derby several years ago in the ride, so good to see him back in town. Number eight is interesting. My father's place, just for the fact that Rusty Arnold tabs a ride Ortiz to ride, and of course this horse is obviously bred to go two turns. He's the son of English Channel. Who was a great sire. Horse has a 47 flat gate work, September 21st. I like any gate work under 48 seconds. I think that shows a, a horse that's got a little bit of speed and talent. So, yeah, we're going to use number eight in my father's place. Uh, number nine, El Muheat. You heard a while back that Brendan Walsh has a ton of two-year-olds he's unleashing. I don't know if this is one of them, but uh, he does tab Tyler Gaffley on the ride. The only problem, I I was almost set to single this horse, and I, I got to research his pedigree. There's not a whole lot on his damn side under the first and second dam that I could see. So I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with that one. Maybe maybe Brendan Walsh can, can get something out of this horse. But, uh, you know, at 8-1, to one, he's worth using. And finally, the horse that you mentioned, number 12, Tekach for Nacho Correa's. Jose Ortiz takes the mount. This horse in his second start was a mile back early and did rally to get uh, within two lengths of the winner. I don't know if it was the strongest race in the world, but uh, Nacho, I like him at Keeneland. So and I don't like the 12 hole, but like I said, it's Nacho. So we're going to use him. Okay. Well, I like it. say if, if we do go short in races three and four, um, might allow us to go deep in uh, race five, which we might be alive to catch a price, like you said. Um, race number six is a six and a half furlong allowance optional claimer. Um, there was one horse in particular that I was interested in, um, and if he doesn't, if he doesn't win, then obviously this this race is wide open. But number four, Giant Mischief. Um, Six to five on the morning line for uh, Brad Cox and Tyler Gaffleone, uh coming out of the grade one Malibu. Um, just got beat by four lengths. Um, didn't didn't uh, hurt hurt his hurt hurt his uh, reputation by any means. Uh, two two back he was uh, second and first at Churchill Downs. I think he fits and deserves it to be the favorite. If you were looking to beat him, I think the one Kavad. For Joe Sharp and Jose Ortiz, uh, might sit a, a perfect trip on the rail, and um, 
just came out of the same race as extra extra Anejo, um, who was rumored to be one of the better sprinters um, at, in the beginning of the year. Uh, and Bromley, who's in the same race, uh, would be the other one that I would be interested in. Um, just cause I think, like I said, he might be able to sit even a farther back trip and make a, a one sustained rally, uh, and maybe pick up the pieces. But for me, it's all about number four, giant mischief. Did you see it any other way? Yeah, that's the one to beat. Uh, the other one I would maybe consider would be number five, Cyclone Mischief, who that August 3rd race, man, man horse ran a hole in the wind 108 and four there was a horse named rhyme schemes that was a really top two-year-old last uh, summer at saratoga uh one one of those uh stakes races by several lengths and cyclone mischief just uh, beat him and you know ran him down in the stretch uh eight and four for uh, six furlongs that day that's a pretty strong race and i figured he would bounce in his next dart and he certainly did he, he ran sixth of seven in the louisville thoroughbred society Maybe he's still recovering from that big effort, so I would want a bigger price than seven to two. I think I'd probably want like six or seven to one on him if I were to put a win bet on him. But he's certainly capable, on his best, of beating the favorite. So now whether, like I said, whether he can do that remains to be seen. So I'd want to get paid if I were going to take a stab at him. Okay. All right. Well, let's we'll uh, we'll we'll hope that number four can get the job done for us there. Uh, number uh, race number seven is a maiden six furlong for uh, Philly two year olds. Um, this particular race, I had a couple of them. Um, as the way I see it on paper, the number two contemplate and number twelve my little punky. Um, they both showed speed in their last start. I feel like they're both going to go straight to the front. Um, if one of them maybe gets the lead over the other. Um, they might be tough to beat. Um, I would prefer the two over the 12 if I were picking one. Um, for me, the six horse for Brad Cox and Windstar Farm. Um, usually they go to Florent Giroux um, for their first time starters. And they've got Flavian Pratt uh, named to right here, which shows me that maybe they uh, think a little bit higher than this horse, maybe, or... Um, Maybe they just, they just decide to make a little bit of a change, but I'm going to take that as a positive and um, think the keepsake is a, is a uh, first time starter with a promising future. Um, so I'd use the sixth on top, uh, the four horse um, for Brendan Walsh. Like we said, if throw out that uh, sloppy track in his last race and he just got beat by two and a half links and sent off as the favorite in his opening rate, opening, uh, career at Ellis Park and the other horse that we potentially could use uh, would be number eight uh, mess call mule uh, for Sherry DeVoe and Jose Ortiz. Um, I've tried to beat Sherry multiple times and I've kind of learned my lesson that I'm not going to get rid of her. So um, we're going to use her as well. So we're going to go four, six, eight. How about yourself? Four, six, nine for me. Uh, Taverna. Kind of the same situation that a couple of uh, Vicky Oliver horses uh, we saw earlier this week. A really nice debut and then a regression in the second start. And then they come back and win at Keeneland. Taverna, same situation. Showed some promise, finishing second. And beat Unomia, who actually won today. We're recording this on Thursday. Unomia won a mile on the 16th. Made in special weight. Taverna beat her in the debut. And then comes back on sloppy track and runs fourth. Uh, uninspiring effort, to say the least. But I would give Taverna a second chance here. And then, yeah, like I said, keepsake. The mother top quality was a stakes filly in Northwest, Wash, or, well, the Northwest U.S. and, and Canada. So she does have some quality and into mischief, obviously produces a lot of speed. So, and then the fact that they named Flavian Pratt to ride tells you everything you need to know about her chances. And number nine, Miss Farrow for Phil Sims. Really nice work to have for this one. She's tipped her hand here. September 10th, 47 second gate work. September 26, 46 and three gate work. And then October 4th, a bullet 59 and three. So yeah, this Philly, 
for Phil Sims. Phil Sims knows that, or he has an eye for quality. I think he picked out a, a Philly for $1,000 at auction that t- went on to win a grade one. So obviously Phil Sims is a really good trainer and he, he wants to win at Keeneland because that's where he's based. So yeah, four, six, nine for me. Okay. Well, I just want to mention number five, um, just because uh, we were talking off air about, uh, the pedigree, uh, Prince, it's Aaliyah. Looks like it was a, a $1.2 million, um, September yearling purchase. And it was sent to uh, D. Wayne Lucas. And I think you said that based on the pedigree, it is a relative of winning colors. The granddaughter of winning colors, 1988 Kentucky Derby winner, third filly to win the Derby. Okay. Well, if, if uh, this horse wins, obviously it wouldn't be a surprise. Um, but it's, it's not one we're going to use. But I thought that was interesting. We wanted to pass that along. Um, D. Wayne Lucas won for his last 39 with first time starters. Now I think the one he had beat me. So awesome. <laughs> well, let's, let's hope for our sake it's going to be one for 40. Um, race number eight is a mile and an eighth on the turf. It is the grade one Queen Elizabeth II Challenge Cup. Uh, this race, obviously being a grade one is very tough. Um, I'm going to go back to Sherry DeVoe in this race for She Feels Pretty with John Velasquez. Uh, just ran second, uh, barely getting beat by Gray Osh, who's officer in the race, uh, in the Lake Placid at Saratoga. And um, this horse has gone off as the favorite. Looks like taking a lot of money in the last three races. Gotten beat in the last two, but um, has been in some really uh, steep competition. I'm going to take number three because if I don't take number three, to be quite honest, don't really know who else I would take. You could break, basically use the whole field. Um, number eight pounce uh, was also one that could I thought might be able to pull off the upset um, coming in uh, from Kentucky Downs. Maybe not. Didn't like the track as much. Looks like they had some traffic trouble for Dylan Davis. Um, but before that, won the Lake George going a mile at Saratoga off the pace and I'm hoping maybe uh, Jose Ortiz can get a nice track, a uh, nice trip. And uh, if the three doesn't fire, maybe the eight horse can. Uh, how, how about yourself? So she feels pretty, you know, like you said, last four times she's been uh, sent off as the favorite. She's only won one of them. So we got to go somewhere else. I think, I think she's most likely to hit the board. So if you wanted to build a try or a super around her, that may be a, a way to go, but you're not going to get a very good price. Number five, Soprano, is the one I'm most interested in. On thoroughgraphs, he's really fast. He's the uh, co-fastest horse in the race with She Feels Pretty. And the only thing I don't like, is she's had a lot of starts this year. She's raced seven times already. So she's fit. She's going to be fit. Sometimes these horses, though, when they race so much and then they ship over, they're at the tail end of their campaign. They they may start to regress a little bit. But since we're going to get a bit of a price against the favorite, I'm, I'm going to side with her. Her last start was very impressive. She was beaten by a really nice filly, Port of Fortuna. And, you know, she was fine there. She's never been this far, mile and an eighth, but uh, those, those hilly courses that in Ireland – and uh, Europe probably will set her up for this. I don't think the distance will be an issue. So Soprano for me, the other one I would use, I think, just looking at her, is number six, oversubscribed for Chad Brown, Clara Vitch. Uh, Chad Brown always runs well in this race. His two starters here on paper don't seem to match up, in my opinion. But number six, oversubscribed, is lightly raced. She's never been out of the exact in four starts. When they're lightly raced like this, that means that they can improve quite a bit. And she's got a hell of a pedigree. Too darn hot was a really nice uh, miler in Europe. And and the grandsire, Cape Cross, uh, I think produced or sired a arc winner, if I'm not mistaken. So pedigree is not an issue. Obviously, can get the distance. I think this, uh, this filly probably is ready for a move forward. So... I don't have a problem with her at all. And then, like I said, Pounce is a horse that might get a piece of this. You just got to draw a line through that last start. She's not a sprinter. She needs to go two turns. And the only drawback, I guess, is that uh, she does have another poor effort. 
back in April, and that was on Keeneland's course here, and I don't see a real excuse for it. She was 5-2 to two that day and ran 11th of 12. So uh, Pounce fits on numbers a bit to get part of this, so I don't know. I I, I would use her underneath. Uh, 10, Kendala is a interesting European shipper, daughter of Frankel, and, of course, the, the Aga Khan. I don't know what he does. He's like the the spiritual leader or the religious leader of some. <laughs> that's the truth. It's, it's, uh, you, you, just, you just love you just love saying that name, the Aga Khan. Yes, I think you said that. I think you said that in every podcast we've had. The Aga Khan. The Aga Khan. I wonder what his real name is. Like Frank or George. <laughs> well, he's prob, prob, probably like number uh, number five. He's he's either George or Billy. Billy Khan. How about that? There you go. Well, that's that's your your homework assignment for our next <laughs> pod is you got to find out who the Aga Khan is and what his real name is. <laughs> I know he's got a beautiful wife, or he used to. I, that's, I, I saw his wife a long time ago. She was gorgeous. So maybe he's well, rich name, too. He's obviously the name, rich. With the name Aga Khan, he's got some oil money. And he's got a got a nice looking woman too. So yeah, <laughs> who cares if he wins races? Right. Well, he he breeds a lot of nice horses. So yeah, uh, I think he. I think he bred Dalla Connie. Dalla Connie was a really nice, I think he may have won the English Derby or the Irish Derby or something like that a long time ago. So, but he's, he's, a, he's bred a lot of important horses in, in Europe. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll look that up and, and his, his, his first name is probably Henry or Hank or something with HH. He was Trey. <laughs> there you go. I wish, I wish I was the Aga Khan. Yeah. I, I do too. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to move on to race number nine, uh, a mile and a 16th optional claimer uh, for three-year-olds and up. Uh, in this race, I actually can't – I there's a horse that I like um, that is 20 to 1 on the morning line. Uh, I might still be feeling the effects of today, um, but Bourbon Resolve caught my attention. Uh, if you throw out the last race, um, looks like he said he was – has left lead. He was inside and maybe just didn't have the uh, best of trips. Um, but he's and on numbers. He's got a 91, a 90, an 89, a 98. Um, the last four figures. I, at 20 to one, I'm, I, I have to take a, take a shot. Um, he's one for one in the Keeneland dirt. Um, broke his maiden here back in April of last year. Um, Ian Wilkes has had a, for him, I'm sure it's a, uh, kind of a slow year. But he's been known to produce some winners uh, at big odds, and and I'm going to take a shot there. If if uh, he doesn't fire, I think the most logical horse in this race, if he's ready off the layoff, is the five parchment party. Um, he's two for two, um, both at Churchill back in September of November of last year. Doesn't say why there was a um, a lull in the action for for that long of a period of time. Um, but Bill Mott, Pin Oak Stud, um, can't can't fault that can't fault him if if uh, if he is ready. That he's probably the most logical winner. Parchment Party was a, a bona fide Kentucky Derby horse after that allowance win. That was a very nice field he beat that day. Uh, it doesn't say in the running lines, but the fourth horse in that race was Catching Freedom. For Brad Cox and Florent Giroux, and that horse had a horrendous trip, and part of it was his own doing. Flo, Florent Giroux took a lot of heat for that, but the horse lacked a little bit between his ears, as he was uh, not wanting to do with Giroux. He wasn't really cooperating with Giroux that day, but he did, he did finish fourth. And there were some other nice horses in here. The runner-up, First World War, I think he won the Pin Mile on grass earlier this year, and uh, Laganos was a, a nice horse as well. I think he was a Stakes horse later on. So Parchment Party was dead last in that race and, and rallied to, to run by them all. And that's a shame that uh, he was knocked off the Derby Trail. So he's obviously interesting in, in here. Number seven, Ben Franklin, is a horse I like a little bit. He got really good at Oaklawn last winter. And then he kind of tailed off. So McPeak, uh, well, he didn't tail off. He just ran fourth. I, Apparently got hurt in that uh, stakes race or, or shortly thereafter, but he, he was laid off. McPeak brings him back. He gave him a, a uh, he gave him a uh, a 
prep at Churchill going nine furlongs is the same race that, that uh, your horse Bourbon Resolve is in. And uh, yeah, so I think uh, we may see his best second time out here. And uh, number four, King Kumbale is a horse that's interesting for Nacho Correa's horse also makes a second start off a layoff. And my cat, as my cat enters the picture, make sure he doesn't stop recording here. That would be fantastic. <laughs> uh, King Kumbale is a horse I'd be interested in. And Baton Rouge, if he's getting, a, if he gets an easy lead, Baton Rouge is dangerous. And of course you can't leave out number 11. Oh boy. Coma Rubino Amoyde. Kamo Rubino Amoyde for, uh, Deodoro and Perry Martin. You know who Perry Martin owns, right? I chance. have no idea. He owned California Chrome. <laughs> oh, and, I do see that that's a sire, so that makes sense. Yeah, so this horse, uh, California Chrome, went to Japan. He, I think he's there now, standing stud. So I, I assume Perry Martin sends, sent some mares over there. And uh, this is one of the horses he got, a horse that uh, he's, he stakes placed. So uh, ab- absolutely worth uh, using. I think he's going to be the favorite, though, so not much value there. But I, I, w- I would use him. Okay. All right, well, if um... – the, if the 13 were to draw in creative minister uh, for Kenny McPeak, he's been ice cold so far, but I know that horse has got uh, some class uh, might be one worth looking at as well. If, if you have to draw in um, race number 10 to, to conclude the card is a one mile turf uh, for two year olds that have never won two races. Um, these races are always tough because if, if they haven't won, if they broke their maiden, they're going in obviously the second start. Uh, against the winners um and if they're not not winning then you got to figure out why they're not winning uh the number one poster for owen hardy and rafael bejarano bejarano um broke its maiden at ellis um uh, basically gate to wire um said he shied from the tire tracks uh, but he was way ahead to look at that at that point so it didn't matter uh might be tough if he gets out in the front uh, and has a nice trip on the rail. Uh, the horse that interested me was uh, number six, the Brigade, um, a War of Will two-year-old. Uh, broke his maiden at Colonial uh, going a mile, and then they turned around and ran him at Kentucky Downs in the uh, the juvenile mile. And he went off at huge odds, um, but he looks like he didn't do too bad. He uh, was five wide around the the the, the in what they call the uh, their, their final turn, um, but he, like I said, he didn't didn't uh, do too bad, and and I think if he with these tighter turns, obviously, uh, Jose might have a better trip. And um, at at a uh, eight to one, I'm going to take a shot with the six horse. Yeah, I think this race there's there's a very good chance this race falls apart, and it could yield some some upsets. So I, I'm going to cast a wide net in here use most of them in my in my uh exotics the horse i'm kind of interested in the most is number four coal battle son of coal front for lonnie briley that's a louisiana name and uh horse broke his maiden at evangeline downs in the slop sprinting and then they shipped into kentucky downs i know briley won a won a race at kentucky downs so you know he's no stranger to the winter circle in kentucky so coal battle Again, was a while back early, and he he looked like he kind of preferred going the distance, and he, he closed very well to finish fourth, passed all, all the other horses with ease, uh, didn't didn't threaten the top three, but uh, you know I'm not necessarily going to stake my day on Cold Battle, but he's going to be uh, prominently on my tickets. So, but I will tell you what, this is a this is a tough. Tough spot to find anything that you can absolutely love. The the eight horse entered the dragon goes for Jose D'Angelo, Rad Ortiz. This is the same combination that won one of those two million dollar races at Kentucky Downs last month. So just for that reason alone, I'm going to uh, consider this horse. But uh, on on paper, he doesn't look like much. Okay, well. Just going back and looking over the sequence, if you single the four horse in the first leg, then you might be able to go deeper 
um, in some of these other le- other legs. And uh, if if he doesn't win, or uh, Cox is a first time starter, maybe the six keepsake, and you catch some prices. I know today we hit the pick five, but I think it only paid like three hundred dollars. <laughs> um, I I can see this one paying like ten or fifteen thousand, um, which obviously would be huge. So I, I don't have a ticket to give to you because I feel like it's so tough. I don't want to throw a five hundred dollar ticket out there just just to throw it out there. Um, but is there, do you have any? If you had to single anybody or anywhere to go, do you have any advice? Uh, I would. Uh, Sopranos the one I think I like the most, but. Uh... Yeah, Soprano, and, you know, if I could play a cheap pick five ticket to get alive to Cole Battle, I think I'd be happy there. And, um, you know, like a, a pick five or a pick four, that would be uh, – should pay a little bit, I would think, unless it just chalks out, which I, I suppose is possible. It's been a lot of chalks think, winning at uh, Keeneland. So yes, yeah, so if, it, if it chalks out, the, the general public knows way more than we do because I, yeah. I don't see that. I don't see that happening, but who knows? That, that's a given. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, 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 uh, like I said, we had, we had a group from Indiana today. And if they're listening, I just want to give a shout out to them. We had a great time and, and I hope you all did too. Um, there was a gentleman with us and we were always looking for a, a saying to close the, close the, uh, podcast off with. And I've never been able to really find out one, but he said, uh, and, and I'm, I'm going to have a curse word in here. So I apologize if anybody listening that it, it'll offend, but he said, so you all don't know shit, but you're going to make us money. And and I thought I thought that was that was pretty good because we obviously don't know much, um, but our job is to try to help you all. So <laughs> our, our new saying is going to be, we don't know shit, but we're going to make you money. So for uh, CC Broadus and myself, Trey Server, we appreciate you joining us this evening and uh, good luck on Saturday. Put that on a T-shirt.